Howdy, howdy. Lao Shi Lawrence McElroy here for Water Tiger School of Tai Chi Chuan. It is a Monday um, in December, and here is another pre recorded Water Tiger for Sechem presentation. Uh, we switched from live a few weeks ago because we were having issues with the live streaming. We have the feeling that it's probably our bandwidth, and we have not increased that. And should we do that, we'll uh, give live a, a shot in the future, but we don't currently have that exactly on the calendar. So here I am pre-recorded, but it is done as if live. So if I stumble, if I fall, if I say something stupid, it's just too bad. It will go um, on the record, as it were. So this is our 35th Water Tiger for Sachem. Uh, since we started back in March uh, 23rd of this year. That's like 67% of a year of Mondays. Wow. Um, and we still have a lot of stuff in the queue that's still original. Um, something else that's original, this t-shirt has never made an appearance in a public class before. It's from my, you know, pile of, if you were, um, fashion t-shirts. But it's Poseidon. Um, water tiger, Poseidon, I guess it sort of makes sense. Um, so not a lot in the world of news. Uh, of course, water tiger's home base is in Suffolk County on Long Island in the state of New York, and our infection rates are rising. Um, studio is still currently open at this time for the blended in-person and remote classes. Um, not sure how long that will last before we all get booted back into the remote world. Um, but right now, and our protocols are really top notch. And part of that is, and I mean, I like to think that I would lead Water Tiger as safely as possible in the current conditions, but we rent from 4DK Martial Arts. And so their protocols are our protocols. And wow, um, they, I, I, I just can't say enough about uh, the safety protocols that we have in the studio. Of course, everybody is masked. We maintain uh, physical distance. There are health screenings at the beginning of class and whenever anybody comes into the, uh, into the studio. So anyway, and that's you know, part of the reason that um, you know, libraries won't do personal programs is much of the protocols to which we adhere, though we go above and beyond what New York State requires. Um, the libraries would have to follow those same sort of protocols and do health screenings and do disinfecting before, during, and after uh, every um, physical exercise class. No, I, I, I really don't like doing that. But I'm not going to stop and re-record <laughs> because this is being recorded as if live. So today, a few days ago, we did a short little live burst um, giving you a heads up on something that you might want to pull out of your closet. If you have one, now there's a specific reason that I'd prefer a yardstick than something else. But if something that is flat, that is not a yardstick, you know, um, a short, more narrow piece of wood um, around, you know, around the length of a yardstick is pretty good. But I do have, and I, when it's during the live session, we also suggested this is the extender on a ceiling fan. And it's round, so it's not ideal, and I'll explain why all this is important. But if you have a good visual imagination, you can, you can create the illusion of what it needs to represent. And this is just a tight roll of postal wrapping paper. So it's a little flimsy, but again, again, round. So it's not ideal, but it'll still work. So um, I might suggest if you didn't catch that little live burst and you don't have something like that at hand, since this is pre-recorded, you can hit pause, go find something and come back and join us for our warm up. So our warm up today, I think I'm just going to stay back here. Our warm up today, a little combined thing. Uh, we're going to do a, a standing side stretch. Well, my approach to a standing side stretch, Water Tiger's approach as well, um, to uh, in yoga, a standing side stretch in yoga. Uh, there's actually on our YouTube channel, 
there's a specific video in, um, let's see, what, what is it? Um, stretching and physical training in that playlist that is uh, side stretch variations and the standing side stretch is part of that. Uh, but I thought I'd bring it into these um, Water Tiger for Sachem programs um, to, in, in the sequence. Uh, and the other thing to keep in mind is that we're gonna do a wrist stretch, which we've done and actually for Water Tiger for Sachem back in April, I wanna say it was the 20th. Um, I have a note up here, but I'm really far away. Ooh, wow, I was really off, April 6th. Um, and it was specifically wrist stretches. So this was one of those wrist stretches that we sometimes do in, in, um, in a public class. Um, but some people aren't familiar with them because a lot of people who follow Water Tiger just know the wrist stretches that we do uh, from the Shaolin Chen uh, hand exercises. Um, so anyway, so we're going to do that. We're, we'll do a little bit, of, and then there's a little bonus thing that I want to do for the hands. Um, as part of the side stretch and wrist stretch variations. Um, so we are going to move a little bit. Um, since we're getting into uh, a little bit, you know, less warm weather, um, my, you know, the, the studio, the space that we use, Water Tiger uses for these video presentations, is in the basement of my townhouse. And uh, we're, it, it's not part of the heated system of the townhouse. So as things get a little bit chillier outside, things are a little bit chillier down here and it is this recording is being done in the morning almost you know at the right time for a 10 o'clock posting on uh, Monday um, so it's not exactly warm down here so I want to just move and shake and bop and roll balls and feet are on the ground my heels are bouncing I just want to get a little warmth into my body before I stretch this morning now I'm going to give you some modifications in the standing side stretch. Now, some people might just completely eliminate the upper arms in their side stretch because they have a shoulder impingement. I would prefer for the activation across the shoulder that you still activate that arm, but it's just not going to go where other people's arms are going to go if you have a shoulder impingement. <sighs> so I'm leaving the ground now. Just bopping and bouncing. Breathing and relaxing. Little turns. Little twists in the waist, a little separation between the upper body and the lower body. The upper body is actually staying still, the lower body is doing the twist. <sighs> Flicking kicks. Using the opposite hand as I do a little flick on the hand and a little flick really on the toes and the feet. Old favorite, huggers. Left hand over the top, right hand over the top. There are all sorts of variations of huggers too. I'm just doing the basic. I like to keep moving. Some people do huggers and they just stand here. I suppose, in a way, that focuses more on the upper body, but I prefer the movement. <sighs> I think that's probably okay. If you need more, again, it's not live. You can hit pause, do a little bit more, warm up a little bit deeper. So, as below, so above. So we're going to start at the feet. Now, I use that phrase now um, a lot in our Tai Chi because we talk about upper body, lower body. Something happens upstairs, it has to happen downstairs. Something happens downstairs, there needs to be something happening upstairs. But in yoga, as below, so above, what it means is you start at the foundation. And our foundation should be, ideally, in our approach to a standing side, stretch the feet together. And it's a very narrow base. So... If you want a little bit of separation, especially if you're on a really soft floor, you know, sometimes uh, in the studio, uh, depending upon where my balance is, because the mat is a lot softer in the studio, I will just separate my feet because the squishiness of the mat and the intensity of the side stretch, it makes it a little harder to maintain our position. So a little wide. I also, 
Another variation of the side stretch is a broader stance, which sort of changes what is emphasized in the upper body in the side stretch. But to get the basic side stretch, the feet are together. Now, you start to come up through the legs. So the image that I use for that lengthening that we want in a basic yoga stretch is that the feet are anchored to the earth, and you start thinking, you know, when I'm, I, since we're playing up through the body, my hips, this area is a big helium balloon and it's lifting and lengthening the legs. And then the head becomes the helium balloon and the spine is lengthened. So it's not the spine hanging like a string of pearls in our Tai Chi and most of our Qigong. You know, my knees just opened naturally when I did that. It's that lengthening of the spine. Now we'll do the full yoga into it version, which is we're in prayer hands. It's heels of the palms together, pads of the fingers together. You can starfish the hands. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yep, there you go. Boom. Or they can be together. Ah. <sighs> Breathing, it's okay to hear the breath. We're doing a yoga stretch, not a Tai Chi stretch. Now some people on the going up will go right up. And some people will call, I can't remember what it is, but they'll actually keep their hands together as they do the side stretch in prayer hands. We don't do that version, we separate, lifting up and out of the body. And that's the point where you might have arm issues, right? So if you do have a shoulder issue as your arms are going up, maybe you're not going to end up here. Maybe you're going to end up here and then start to do the side stretch like this. And your arm's going to be pointing all the way over there. But I like, I'd rather have that activation in the arm and notice the arm is in the plane of the body than to have the arm down and just do this. This adds to the activation across the body. I mean, I can... I'm here and I feel the stretch and I start to raise that up and it intensifies in the lower spine and the top of the hip um, and that sort of thing. So again, keep that arm active. I like to drop the hands and come up. We're going to do that on an inhale. Some people do it on an exhale. So that means you want to find an exhalation. Inhale, hands drop. Arms are straight, no joints, lengthening, and looking up between the hands. And again, if you're here or here because of shoulder impingements, that's okay. I'm going to drop the left hand and start to reach across with the right arcing. Again, it's in the plane of my body. See? I'm going to turn my head to look toward the eye of the elbow. It might be all the way over there. Oops, I lost my feet together. And I'm breathing. And I'm exploring the arc to get this hand pointed in a direction that is where the wall and the ceiling meet. Now, this lower wall of the basement of the Median abode, um, yeah, that ain't going to happen. Breathing and again, if you're here or here, you want that straight arm, no joints, no bent arm here. Here just destroys the stretch. I'd rather have it straight and working in that direction. No joints, a couple more breaths. This arm just pressed against the side lightly. I'm not reaching to the ground. That is a variation. Find an exhalation. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, over to the other side. I'm going to add a couple other variations here. One side's probably going to be more flexible than the other. That's okay. I mean, you know, just work on it. 
Again, straight arm. Maybe on the other side, you had to be out here, and on this side, you can go to town. A few more breaths. Reaching, stretching, remember, generally on our stretches, we explore the stretch on the exhale, and sort of pause that exploration on the inhale. Now, find an inhalation, and here's the first variation. Exhale. The forearm, upper arms parallel to the earth. Forearms perpendicular to the earth. And I have my elbows, ideally, and my hands close together, so the pages of the book, the book is closed. Some books... For some people, you know, you might be here. And then on an inhale, which is still a stretch, I'm going as far back as I can, doing this goalpost position, and then an exhale, and then an inhale, and then an exhale, and then an inhale. Going to return to where we started. Exhale. Inhale up. Now be very, very careful of your spine. And if you have spinal issues, probably want to skip this, and especially in the cervical vertical vertebra. I'm going to start to spread my hands apart and arc. And breathe. Inhale. Upright, palms together, and exhale down. Hold the prayer hands. This is the wrist stretch. So it's prayer hands, wrist stretch. So I'm here, and what I'm going to do is keep the heels of the palms together. I don't want this to happen. So take an inhalation. I'm going to cut off my head. I'm going to exhale and start pressing down. I'm going to hold that for a breath or two. I'm going to turn up the volume here. I'm going to press the pads of the fingers from side to side and then release. And then down for two. And then release. And this is the last one. Notice, down a little bit more by number three. That kind of helps, the pushing the fingers side to side. Now the last thing I want to do is now really splay out the fingers. See, oops, I'm not sure which side is better. I think this side is better. Splay out the fingers. And then come really close to the camera. Pull them apart. So I still want the base of the fingers together. Really doing that spread. As the person who introduced this idea to me pointed out in introducing it to the group, you know, as we get older, which is another reason why you should do the Shaolin Shin hand exercises as well as, you know, Qigong hand exercises, they're coming to this series. Um, that's, that's really good. It just really opens up the fingers. So, some of you have probably already figured it out, but the reason we want this more than those, though they will work, is that it has two edges. But, all you have to do is remember where you have gripped this, Palm, back of hand, top edge, bottom edge. Why are we talking about edges? Because today's little workshop is about this and drills for the Tai Chi sword 
the Xi'an, which is really Xi'an simply translates as sword. And that, the Tao or the broadsword, is actually a knife. And the difference is the Xi'an, the sword, in Chinese weaponry, a sword is something with two edges. And to be a sword, it has to have two edges, regardless of its size. And by the way, I just want to point out that, you know, I have done, you know, public demonstrations with that, this sort of, sort of thing. And the question that always gets me is, is that a real sword? Um, no, it's an illusion. I don't really have anything in my hand. Um, it's not a live blade. It's a practice blade, but it's a real sword. The Tao, Tao translates as knife, is a knife because it has a flat edge and it has a sharpened edge. This is, again, a practice blade, so it doesn't have a sharp edge. However, I don't care if it's this or that or a yardstick or a piece of wrapping paper. It's a real sword while it's in your hand. The thing about our Tai Chi weaponry, and anyone who has studied weapons with me, done a workshop, done a, a seminar, uh, or a former, formal training, will tell you the first thing that we always tell folks is that, you know, we first put the weapon in your hand and then spend the rest of your training taking it away. And what that means is that we tend to grab this weapon and think of it as, as a thing in our hand. And it has to become a part of us. As Cyril Farrell tells Arya Stark when Arya asks him, you know, what happens if I drop my sword? Would you drop your arm? The sword has to be a part of you. It moves with you, not because of you. I don't know if I've used that phrase before. So I mentioned before, uh, you know, imagining the edges. When you first take your sword in your hand, your jian, your weapon, the loose, there's a nice loose grip. A lot of people describe that as sort of holding a baby bird because that creates flexibility. And if you're gripping really hard, one, that, that tension will move up your arm, restricting your movement, and two, a sharp blow to your weapon will knock it out of your hand. But if you have a loose grip, the arm can be loose, the, the wrist is loose, everything is loose, and a sharp blow, the loose hand will absorb the impact. So you want that nice grasping a baby bird-like feeling. But this is the top edge because of the way I'm holding the weapon in my hand. This is the top edge. This is the bottom edge. When I do this, this is still the top edge. This is still the bottom edge. Oops, I just cut my finger. I'm not used to playing with a ruler very much. I always avoid the blade, even when it's not sharpened, because I want to treat this as a real weapon. So the flat of the blade does not is just you know connecting the upper and the lower. But again, that's the upper edge of the blade pointing down. This is the lower edge of the blade pointing up. So you always, I'm leading with the down, with the downside of the blade, I'm leading with the downside of the blade, I'm leading with the downside of the blade, even when I'm moving up. So that's something to remember. I did a, a weapon seminar with, underneath somebody, and it was with the short fighting sticks. And I have always, in my own training, I've used that sort of spin to really, you know, start to feel and sense the weight and the movement of the weapon. And man, I thought he was going to knock my head off because spinning doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't do anything for him. It does something for me. It's not something that I would do in combat because, you know, I get into a lot of sword fights, but 
it helps me feel the weight and the movement and the, yes, the chi of the weapon. And every weapon has a personality. It feels different even, you know, if I start to picture this as that weapon, the Tao, I start to develop a little bit different feeling in the connection point. As a Jian, or if I pick up that weapon, a real weapon, it feels different. It has its own personality. And you have to bring your body and your attitude and your intent into that. Now, there is a, a <laughs> I almost said point, and it's punish, and you'll know why. Um, there is a point in the Game of Thrones storyline where, you know, do you know what to do? I think it's, again, with Arya Stark, and I think it's Jon Snow, you know, in the early episodes. Like, you, you, you do know what to do with it, but it might have been um, um, Ned. Uh, do you know what to do with it? Yes, and the number one rule of sword fighting is stick them with the pointy end. Not really true with the Jian. The Jian is all about subtlety. It's about the edge. So even if we do a drill where we're doing this, I'm not thinking of sticking them with the pointing, pointy edge. I'm thinking of running that blade across the side of their ribcage, slicing their lat open, their uh, lateral muscle on their torso open, not jabbing in. Even the jabby moments are what one of my students calls stabby moments. I still see that slice. If you want to build your imagination on what that feels like, you have a, any turkey left on the carcass from last week, start slicing off the pieces or cut any piece of meat, and or for that matter, a, a nice coarse um, vegetable. That's the feeling you're creating with your shadow opponent as you're doing the weapons. So just basic drills. We're going to stay in the right hand, but you should do both hands because, you know, Again, we want to extend our chi into the weapon. We want to be able to do it with both hands, if for no other reason. It is a combat art. Yes, there's not a lot of weaponry, but you know, I can I can do a lot of the stuff I do with the Jian um, with other things at hand. But I'm right-handed, so the whole right-oriented world of the martial arts works pretty well with me. But I could get in a fight and lose the use of my right arm. I have to be able to do something with my left. But we're going to stay right. We're going to stay with one side. So the first basic drill, you know, I'm doing some of the stuff here. I'm switching back and forth between the hands just to show you that you need that sort of flexibility, that sort of ability just to switch from one side to the other. I've done a few spins. I haven't done a spin with my left hand yet, but a few spins just to feel that. And those spins are done in what's known as the tiger's mouth. Right, that area right there, the tiger's mouth, where the th inside of the thumb and the outside of the um, index finger. Right? So it's very loose in there. I, don't, I can't do that spin if I keep that tight grip. Boom. So those are the first two things to sort of play with. Just switching hands. So you get accustomed to it in both hands, and you can just flip it from side to side, and then a spin or two. And you can go back, you can go forward, you can go forward, you can go back, you can go forward. Whoops, that was back. No, that was forward. This was back. This is forward. That's back. In the tiger's mouth, the wrist, the reason the wrist has to be open, it's like I said, it's all about subtlety with the Xi'an. So the first thing is a standard figure eight. Doesn't really can entirely look like an eight because we wrap around the sides. And the first one we're going to do is up. So got the sword on the right side. And then the lower right corner, I'm going to bring it up to the upper left. Then down, downside of the blade, to the lower left, lower side of the blade leading up to the upper right, cutting back, down to the lower right, and up 
to the upper left, down to the lower left, up to the upper right, down to the lower right, not touching the floor, up to the upper left, down, lower left. I'm going to come back around this way once, and I'm going to stop where I started, and I'm going to turn around and face away from you and do it again. Shouldn't touch the floor. Shouldn't touch the ceiling. The weapon should only touch what you intended to touch. That being said, yeah, I've hit a few things in my day. So, again, I'm starting in the lower right. I'm going to cut up, and notice lower side of the blade is up, upper side of the blade is down, to the down, sorry, to the upper left, down from the upper left to the lower right, cutting back. See, I'm back behind the body. Up to the upper right, down to the lower right, up to the upper left, down to the lower left, up to the upper right, down to the lower right, up to the upper left, down to the lower left, up, and home again, home again. So that's a figure eight cutting up. If I want to do a figure eight cutting down, then I'm going to turn from starting the downward side of the blade up to turning the downward side of the blade back because I'm going to be cutting. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to be cutting up. So I've gone going from the lower right, turning, leading with the down side of the blade up to the upper right, down to the lower left, turning the blade, palm turns in, so then the downside of the blade can go up, up to the upper left, down to the lower right, up to the upper right, down, and I'm slicing across, I'm not chopping, this isn't the broadsword, slicing, imagining the very end of that blade cutting across chest and solar plexus of someone. Boom. Good morning. <laughs> How to kill in three easy steps. Up to the upper right, down to the lower left, up to the upper left, down to the lower right, up to the upper right, down. This is the last figure eight in this direction. Up, down, and boom. Now I'm going to turn around. Right? The remember should also be able to do this with the other hand. Now, I'm not talking about the second hand at all, because I, a lot of times, first doing this, to talk about, you know, you should be, let's see if I was doing, boom, the secret sword hand should be either leading or following that movement. And this is the secret sword hand. If you've ever done draw the bow to shoot the hawk, you know this, well, draw the bow to talk about water tiger school lineage. Index and middle finger together, rest of the hand and open fist. Right? That's the secret sword hand. Um, but we're, gonna, we're leaving that out of this equation. Oh, I'm going to turn and face this way. So we're doing the downward figure eight. So we're going to start, I'm just starting on the right side on everything. And we're going to cut, oops, we're going to turn. Right, so down and back, turn, palm of the hand turns out, to then turn in again, up and to the upper right, down to the lower left, palm of the hand is out here, it turns in to turn out, up to the upper left, down to the lower right, up to the upper right, down to the lower left, up to the upper left, down to the lower right. And by the way, I forgot to talk about it at the beginning. And no, I'm not going to hit stop and do take two. But I happened to think of this the other day. A memory was triggered. And while Water Tiger was still in Des Moines, down to the lower left, up to the upper left, down to the lower right, up to the upper right, down to the lower left, 
to the upper right, and you know, you can start to really move with that if you want to. Um, anyway, back in the day, um, in the early 90s, mid 90s, late 90s, there was another Tai Chi instructor who was actually contemporary Wushu, was his main art, but he did young style Tai Chi as well, uh, who happened to work for a major financial company in Des Moines. And there was an article in the paper about the classes that he gave his fellow employees at the financial company. And they'd, he'd been doing it long enough that he was starting to teach them weapon, <coughs> weapons for him. And of course, businesses tend to frown upon you know, people carrying weapons um, around. So they used yardsticks. And um, they became known from the other businesses and other employees who, who weren't participating as the Tai Chi stick people uh, for their practicing in the courtyard of the um, of that particular company. So anyway, I wanted to share that. So the next exercise, and I think probably the last thing we'll do today, is um, sort of a version within our Gian form. There's a left interception and a right interception, and you know the figure eight helps us to sort of you know work a little bit on intent and leading with the blade and getting accustomed to making the changes to function with the lower side of the blade. Uh, and maintain, you know, some people, you know, they'll, they'll move up and it'll be the flat side of the blade. No, you want to lead with the blade. So this too is leading with the blade, but this is also being aware of the relationship between the blade and the earth. The left interception to the right interception, notice on camera, you can't really see something in my hand because it's not tilted down and it's not tilted up. And that's what we want. We want even as we switch for the control of that blade to remain steady. So as we switch here, there's no figure eight, there's no down and then coming back up, there's no up and coming back down. It's a rotation of the wrist on the same plane. So I want to keep that blade parallel to the earth as I slice back. Oops, what did Lawrence just say about not hitting things? I'm just too close to that exercise bike. So there, turning without any drop of the blade. Mine dropped a little bit. And you can probably imagine that this is a little bit easier using something like the wooden dowel. Again, palm up, there's the underside of the blade, there's the top side of the blade. Not down, not up, right there parallel. It's a lot easier with these implements which are really relatively light compared to the real thing. Now you want to make the yardstick a little bit more realistic. Find yourself a tassel of some sort and get it on the end, especially in the figure eight sequence. A lot more weight here. Most of the weight's in the hilt. But, you know, I don't, I'm not overextending, I'm not underextending. Both of those things put pressure on muscles. I'm finding that place where the weapon becomes part of my structure. So I'm not really straining anything here. It's gravity and structure holding it up. The tassel can be used as a distraction to your opponent. It can be used as a weapon. You can actually snap it. But also through the play, I'm working not to have that happen. See where the tassel, or I'm being mindful not to let that happen. The tassel has wrapped around my hilt and my blade. You want to be able to move the weapon in such a way that the tassel 
is never entangled. It's also, you know, one of its other uses was to tie to your wrist so you couldn't lose your weapon in combat. But again, this left interception, I'm turning to the left, right interception with the weapon. I'm going to go back to the rule just a little while longer. And we're going to call it a workshop. I'm going to turn away from you. Again, the idea is to build that awareness of the blade to the earth. Move away from the exercise body, Florence. Boom. Turning rotating without any or very little deviation and that blade being parallel to the earth. And also notice I'm not standing here doing this. I'm moving the weapon through my body. Now if you know Water Tiger School then you know the Cheng Men Chin quote that we ran across um, pre-pandemic, if you move your arms and your Tai Chi, then your Tai Chi is worthless. And what that means is that your arms are moved through the whole body. It's the same with the weapon. If you're just moving your weapon, it's worthless. You want to move that weapon through your body. Everything's moving. Again, it's not waving the blade in the air. You're moving your weapon through your body. So there you go. Just a little sort of primer, if you will, um, to starting the idea of playing with the weapon, the idea of weaponry these days. Because again, you can't walk down the street with a sword. Um, but, you know, you can, there are objects you can use, even the principles of the Xi'an work with really any type of bladed weapon, but some of the movements that we do that we talk about with the weapon, it's slicing. Yeah, you can whack, you know, I mean, this can still be a whack against somebody with something that is longer than it is narrow. Um, I'm going to go back to the rule for the end of this. I just want to do something else. You know, you're familiar, probably, if you know Water Tiger School with our standard bow. Right hand closed, knuckles up, represents the yang of the yin yang symbol. It's the knowledge, ability to fight. And the left hand open, cupped over the top of the right, is the yin. It's the choice not to. When you have a weapon, um, I'm holding it, I'm actually using the secret sword hand, but that's not necessary. Notice the flat of the blade is against the shoulder. You're not turning it and cutting, slicing your shoulder open. The flat of the blade is against your shoulder. In the left hand, right hand is open, pressed to the center line. And that's our formal salute for the end of playing with a weapon. So, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you had a good time. Uh, I thought about doing more, but this is running a little long. So, um, that's pretty good. That's, you know, that's three different patterns, as well as, you know, tossing the, the weapon back and forth between the two hands and the little verboten spin in some people's eyes. Um, to get you accustomed to um, extending your chi beyond yourself, to bringing that thing, that appliance, and this is the idea that I started and then sort of walked away from. You know, yes, we can't walk down the street with a weapon, but we're extending our practice on becoming relaxed, on not moving things, uh, but having that movement come from our core, from our center, from our Shia Dantian, and extending our chi beyond ourselves um, into um, what becomes a part of us, a Jian, a Tao, a butterfly knife, a nunchuck, whatever it is. 
So as always, thanks for your time and attention. Um, I hope you got something from this. Uh, these pre-recorded sessions for now are the way that we're doing these uh, Water Tiger for Sachem sessions on Monday, and we are posting them also uh, on the same day on our YouTube channel. We haven't done any other original content for the YouTube channel for a while now. There is still some stuff in queue that we'd like to get to, um, but things are kind of busy um, with just handling pandemic stuff and getting caught up on things on which we fell behind um, because of the pandemic. Um, so we're working on stuff, but anyway. So thank you very much. Uh, mask up, stay physically distanced, Please, please don't think that knowing someone or being related to someone or for that matter, even testing negative on uh, Tuesday um, makes you safe um, for any period of time. Um, you're negative when you test negative. Uh, people you know aren't miraculously virus-free because you know them or because you're related to them. Um, so be careful out there. And that's it. Thanks. Catch you next time.